Welcome to Diffuse Congruence. This is episode 76 of the American Muslim Experience, and uh, this is Pervez Ahmed, and I am joined by my co-host, Zucky. How's it going? Good to be back, Zucky. It, it's it's gr- always great to be back. <laughs> yeah, and we got some um, great feedback from the last episode. Uh, I know we did our Movies That Matter, part one, or the first of a series uh, about The Godfather. Uh Uh, One in particular that I wanted to read, uh, Nida Ali says, just listen to this, and it was great. Really enjoyed listening to our perspectives, meaning, I guess, or sorry, your perspectives, which made me think about the films with a new outlook. Uh, I want to rewatch these films with a different lens, if you will, a new appreciation for the characters and the role they played. Mashallah, keep up the great work you've been doing. Um, And I think you had similar people reach out to you with... Uh, people wanting to check out the movies for the first time, I think. It, you know, anytime somebody says that they want to rewatch or watch the Godfather films uh, because of something I say, I, I file that in the win column. I feel like I should be making royalties off of the number of people. Well, you can just go up to Marin and visit uh, and, and knock on Coppola's door and, yeah. and, and ask for those royalties. Like, where, so. where my money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. So uh, episode 76. Yeah, we're here and we are joined. Uh, I am delighted to be joined by our guest. Uh, and that our guest today is... Sandiata Rashid, who is a Bay Area native and emir of the Lighthouse Mosque in Oakland. We'll get into that. He received his master's in Islamic studies from the Graduate Theological Union uh, in Berkeley in 2014. He works as a social worker with homeless veterans and does so much more. I'm not doing justice to Sandiata. But welcome, Sandiata. Assalamu alaikum. How are you guys salam. doing? Th- yes. Thanks for coming on. Thank yeah, you. it's Thank great. You. It's great to have you. Uh, and uh, as a listener of the show, you kind of know what the format kind of goes. Um, and so as you know, we like to kind of begin with uh, the origin stories. Uh, sort of where do you, you know, where do you come from and kind of your background? So, uh, you know, I was actually born in Inglewood, California, which mm-hmm. is down south. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's in the L.A. Air, LA County. And uh, I grew up mostly in the Bay Area. So we started out, we was living in San Francisco. And then when I got to be in about the first grade, we moved to Berkeley, California. And we stayed there until about junior high school. Used to be, now it's middle school. That's right. And then we moved to Oakland, California. And then when I was actually in the 11th grade, I moved to stay with my father in the east coast Mm. and so my father he was definitely a practicing muslim so the whole time whenever i would stay with him he would have us we would pray you know we would fast like as much as we could Mm. it was in the summer back in those days Mm -hmm. so we was young you fast up until like asr or don't eat candy little different things and then uh then when I, you know, when I got into high school, I had my little wayward time, and my mom was like, "You got to go stay with your dad because you know Oakland was kind of dangerous. Uh, Oakland was a, Oakland, California is definitely, is definitely close to my heart. That's like right. I feel like it's definitely, you know, it's a special place. That's right. But going back to the East Coast. I feel like that did a lot to make me actually be Muslim mm. as opposed to when I was living in Oakland. You yeah. know, people would say, oh, yeah, this is my friend. He's Muslim. But I didn't really do anything Islamic. You know what I'm saying? What was different in the East Coast? And you said specifically D.C.? So, no. Oh, no. So, at first, we was in, uh, in, in a place called uh, Montclair, New Jersey. And that's right not too far yeah. from New York, Newark, East Orange area. Okay. And... Uh, you know, there was just, when I was in high school, there was, like, a lot of Muslims. Mm. Like, you know, like, you would actually know Muslim kids. And so, for the, and then when you would go to the masjids, like, with the masjids in California, it mm. was, you know, they was, they was all pretty much, the ones we went to was, used to be Nation Islam mm. Mosque. And then they made the transition in 74. Right. And so with that transition, you you know, you had a lot of people that stopped coming out. Mm-hmm. And they, I felt like there was definitely that community feel. But as a youngster, I just, that just wasn't my thing. It was like, 
you know, I probably would have been better off listening to Farrakhan than some of the, you know, because, you know, I was young, so right. I was a hothead. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, you know, I didn't feel that like, but when I got to the East Coast, and I tell people this all the time, my dad took me to to Brooklyn, New York, that's and I saw Imam Siraj Wahaj, yeah. and I was like, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Wow. I want to be Muslim just like he is. Wow. And I was like in high school, but uh -huh. it was really like the way he was speaking and he was just like so, he knew what he was talking about and it was in the two different languages and I was just like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Not to say like, you know, you know we had like Imam Fahim Shuaib, he was a very knowledgeable Imam in Oakland. Mm -hmm. But I would name first my dad wasn't there to take me to Juma, so I never would go to Juma on my own. I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that I didn't get impacted in the same way. And then my father, when he was out here, he was very close to so Imam Bukadir. So I would definitely be more in San Francisco, but still that wasn't like Juma, that would be like family night. So it would just be like, you know, yeah. food and Imam Abu Qadir Al Al Alameen in San yeah, Francisco. Who, previous guest of the show, actually. Yeah, and, uh, alhamdulillah. In fact, we recorded that episode at the at, Lighthouse at Mosque. The Lighthouse so Mosque. I came to the Lighthouse <laughs> Mosque, and <laughs> you guys were leaving out, <laughs> and I had no idea what, right. why you guys was there. I just was like, oh, people are at the masjid. Yeah. And then later on, I found out that you guys, did. I think it might have been on something about Islam in prison or something. Maybe. No, it was actually kind of what we're doing here it was his life story okay. and and we actually wanted him on to talk about the legacy of imam waratin muhammad Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Allah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. so um i you know going back to your father um you said you know practicing muslim um was his journey by way of the nation and then so the when my dad transition? he was a black panther right and, and we'll so, get into the Black Panthers because you can't talk about Oakland and not talk about the Black <laughs> so Panthers. That so that was like, that was his thing. But like, it was like, you know, people who were conscious, they all frequented the same type of places. Mm -hmm. So he had a whole lot of friends who was members of the Nation of Islam in San Francisco. Okay. And they would always be trying to get him to join the Nation of Islam. And it was certain points, my dad, he would be, he would be like, so you don't tell me this. He'd be like, look at all these buildings in San Francisco. You tell me the devil built all of this. Mm -hmm. All of this belongs to the devil. God don't own none of this. Like so. Yeah. But it was a point when the nation, when the Black Panther Party started to kind of like dissipate where he made the decision he wanted to be Muslim. And he said he went to a bookstore. And when he went into the bookstore, he was like looking and a book caught his eye. And it was called uh, something like the Alchemy of Happiness by Imam Ghazali or something, right? So he he reads through this book, and he's like, okay, I I believe everything in this book. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So he started, like, on his own practicing Islam. He went to Las Vegas, and he would just go to the mosque. And at that time, Imam W.D. Muhammad had taken over for his father. So because he already knew how to pray, like a lot of the, the ministers and captains, they would come and he would kind of teach them how to pray. And so he definitely was a member of Imam W.D. Muhammad's community okay. from the outset, but he never really like got his ex and joined the nation. He, he was able to bypass that part. Got it. So like when I was young, he'd be playing the Imam W.D. Muhammad. And you know, Imam W.D. Muhammad, his speaking style, you know, I grew, you know, I was a fan of like that fire brand That's and right. Imam W.D. Muhammad was more like a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, you, you could ask my teachers that my whole life, they know I'm not into like listening to a lecture, you mm -hmm. know? Right. So that never really was like my thing, yeah. even though there was never a time in my life where I didn't say I was Muslim, mm -hmm. me practicing and like. I wouldn't been able to tell you all about every street and block and territory in Oakland. Mm -hmm. You'd ask me about the five pillars. I would have been like, what's that? Right, right. <laughs> wow. I would have been like, the Muslims fast, the month, the month starts with an R. But I, <laughs> but I can't remember the name of it. I okay. was like, I, that was the type of Islam I was practicing, you know. And right. then there was a point, though, in my life when it was just like, because, you know, like Oakland, Oakland had a lot of teachers back in those days. And it, it was like a hub. So it was like, 
And when you say those days, you, are you talking about the 70s or this 80s? This is like the 80s. 80s, This okay. is like the 80s. So yeah. this was definitely after the, the, the movement had finished. Mm -hmm. But people still used to come, like, you know, and because my mom was an activist and, you know, Nina Simone stayed mm -hmm. at our house and Stokely Carmichael would be at the house and, you know, different people like that. So I... I definitely had a different kind of consciousness level than a lot of my peers, you yeah, know? Right. And so, you know, I knew that some of the things that I was getting involved with, I shouldn't be getting involved with. Okay. Whereas everybody might know right from wrong, but I kind of definitely knew, like, this isn't the type of things I should be doing. And mm -hmm. then my mom was like, if you miss another night at the house, because I was staying out all mm -hmm. night... Just staying yeah. out all night. Like, I didn't even have a girlfriend. It was just, just like, why don't you go home? Right, right, right. <laughs> and I'm sure my friend's mom was like, don't that boy got a house? Know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and it was it was a dangerous city. It was a beautiful city, but it was very, very dangerous, you mm -hmm. know. So when I went to the East Coast, you know, I didn't know as many people. Everybody who knew me on the East Coast knew me as the Muslim kid, you know okay. what I'm saying? So I didn't get involved in the same types of things that I would have been getting involved in. And I, I had made a conscious decision to kind of just practice Islam right? wherever that would take me, you know what I'm saying? And so right. alhamdulillah, when I was, uh, when I graduated high school, my dad sent me to Umrah and, uh, we did, it was a two month camp for youth. Wow. So we did six weeks in Egypt and two weeks in Saudi. Right. And, uh, then when I came home, I I went to college and was that camp organized by the Imam W D community? No, so this was a masjid. I don't know the name okay. of the masjid, but we used to call it Branford Place, and it was in Newark, New Jersey. Mm. And so, yeah, I mean, so when I got to the East Coast, it was definitely a thing of what it means to be Muslim. Things, questions that never came up in Oakland. Like okay. when I was in Oakland. When I see somebody selling bean pies, and he was Muslim to me. Mm -hmm. When I would go to the mosque, he was. When I would go to the liquor store, they was Muslim. Like in my mind, we are all just one happy Muslim family. Know what I'm saying? Even though yeah. you know y'all's at the liquor store, you know, had its own thing. Like in pre 1989, like now if you go to Oakland, you definitely see the Yemeni. Ma Masullahs and okay. Masajid, but pre nineteen eighty nine and the earthquake, they didn't really do like Islamic stuff. Okay. It was more like for them, you know, they was Muslim, right. but you know, they didn't even come to the African American Masajid. That's right. It was a very insular community. Yeah, and yeah. It, it just wasn't very right. religious at all. And yeah, then yeah. after the earthquake hit, I think they was like, "Oh, wait a minute." God is real. So then they started like coming to you start seeing more of them come yeah. to like the, the masjids in Oakland. They started to open up their own massage. You know what I'm saying? So right. you started like 1990, 91, 92, you started seeing massage. So that's fascinating. I mean, I, I, we haven't talked about the 1989 uh, uh, earthquake uh, on this show. Uh, but would you say that was that kind of like a real defining moment here in the Bay? Oh, man, it was like like. I mean, the Bay Bridge collapsed. Of course. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, there used to be a freeway called the Cypress Freeway. That's right. That whole thing is gone now. It's mm -hmm. like, you know. And like, I think most of the casualties were, were as a result of that freeway that collapsing. That freeway collapsed. And so that freeway was right outside of the projects. That's right. And so it was like all of the people who in actually. In Oakland. In Oakland. Yeah. So all the people who actually came and pulled people out, they was people in the projects. Mm. And so for like black people, it was just another show. Like, look, we ain't getting credit for nothing. Like, you know mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like right. this, that freeway ran through West Oakland. It was like right by the Cypress projects, Acorn projects. The whole wow. thing fell down. And it was like the, the people, and they was pulling people out. Like by the time the rescue workers got mm. there, they continued pulling people out uh, air pockets for like weeks. You know, wow. this guy was in there for two weeks and gets pulled out and he's still alive. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it was, right. it I mean, was something. I wasn't here, obviously. I was watching it on the news. Now, I mean, for most people, I think, in the United States who weren't local, um, we hear about it not only because of the news, but there was a World Series going on. It was on. a during the yeah. World Series. And it was and it was, actually, a inter 
of yeah. the A's and the Giants was playing each other. That's and it, right. So, like, growing up in Oakland, like, I, my grandmom stayed in Hunter's Point, right? Okay. So I knew a lot about San Francisco, but everybody who I knew, mm -hmm. they didn't know anything about San Francisco. Like, people from Oakland didn't – we was Raiders and A's, and they was Giants and, you know what I'm saying? 49ers. The 49ers, That's and right. it was like – there was no interplay between the two black communities whatsoever. And then Mayor Feinstein started to like close down like projects in oh, San Francisco. I forgot Francisco. she was mayor. I forgot she was and mayor. And then all of the blacks started to move from San Francisco to Oakland. And oh. so one thing I say, like it was such a depopulate the Bay area. Like now yeah. uh -huh. compared to when I was a kid, like you could drive to San Francisco and park like it was nothing and get out and go shop or whatever and then come back to your car get in and drive off and i'm saying like it was so much fewer people in mm -hmm. both san francisco and of course oakland and even berkeley was even smaller so right. that just that influx of all these people coming in it's kind of like oakland is just a different city now you right know what I'm well i mean and when you're talking about the late 90s i'm sorry late 80s early 90s this is pre-tech yeah. So, you know, I mean, you Silicon, know, it was like Silicon the, Valley isn't Oakland, the Silicon Valley Oakland that it is. Oakland was more like Detroit, Michigan or really? something back. And like yeah. people like people who were like from the Midwest mm -hmm. or even in the East Coast, they would come to California and be like Oakland is so much like a city on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And even for me when I went to the East Coast as a kid, I felt like this is just like Oakland like it's more was you know, it was it segregated like i mean was was san francisco predominantly white and so, oakland predominantly black that kind of thing yeah or? so san francisco was neighborhoods right okay so you had lakeview uh -huh. which white people call ocean side or ocean view or something so black people call it lakeview white people call it ocean view but that was like a black neighborhood then okay. you had like uh potrero where oj grew up that was a black neighborhood then OJ you grew up in potrero hills oh. and, and uh hunter's point that was a black neighborhood yes Haight Asbury used to be a black neighborhood before the 60s and it became like a hippie place you know what i'm saying <laughs> And then uh now Hunter's course, Point, that's really close to Candlestick Park. That's should, yeah, just yeah. For so those, Bayview Right, not familiar with the uh, Yeah, so with the with the geography. The, exactly. Mm -hmm. So Bayview, Hunter's Point and right. all of that, those was like, you know, the shipyards. They had like a whole lot of toxic waste. So, you know, but it was like a it was like a little black community. But even those communities mm -hmm. like HP, Hunter's Point, didn't get along with Fillmore. Huh. Which they call Filmo. They just didn't get along with each other. So you can imagine they really wasn't feeling people from Oakland because they looked yeah. at us as being country bumpkins. And, For real? Yeah, oh. they was like, we city cats and y'all. They like, Oakland was the town. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And, and that and that was the city. The city. And that's right. what that meant. It was like, you guys is town folks and we city folks. You know what I'm saying? That's And they, and like, you know, they was very, they was more slicker. Yeah. Like Frisco Cats was, they was, was running scams and three car Monty and all of them type of things. Uh -huh. And then Oakland was just, you know, Oakland was just drug dealing. It's like if somebody had a game in Oakland, it was I'm selling drugs. But it, they was very good at it. It was uh -huh. like they was very good at selling drugs in the, to mm -hmm. their own people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so... I got a reprieve from that and got to come to to the East Coast yeah. and just, you know, but even then, Islam to me, like, you know, the, there was like, it's youth whose parents was Muslim, but you guys know, it's, you know, yeah. y'all parents, Muslim. you could be, just because your parents is Muslim doesn't necessarily mean you're going to practice Islam. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I had made the choice at that time where I want to go to the masjid. <laughs> I want to, you know what I'm saying, so fast from Late down. teens. Late actually. teens. And so, I went, so the brother who came with me, Bilal Mustafa, he took Shahada in 88. And so he says, yeah, man, this Ramadan just passed. He was like, man, you ain't fast as many Ramadans as me. And I was like, 
Dude, you ain't fat. I grew up Muslim. Right, right. We both started fasting in 1988 because he converted to Islam. Right. And I came back to Islam. That's right. And so we was both like, this was our 30 year anniversary. We was like, we've been fasting 30 years. You <laughs> <laughs> know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. so, you know, and I'm, you know, That's I'm right. 47. So okay. I started when I was, that was last year. So this would be my. 31st, 31st year so yeah, yeah, yeah so i was about 16 or something okay okay no it's fascinating because you know we're, we're kind of interweaving your your life with the, this conversation around the bay and and and, and that's really what i wanted to do on the show because um you know we haven't focused or we haven't done an episode where we've really talked about the history of islam in the bay and um so go, kind of going back to that conversation around the differences between San Francisco and Oakland, right? Um, because the 60s, and obviously you said you're 47, so you're born in the late 60s. No, you're born in it's the 70s. early 70s, Every sorry. 70s. So the 60s is kind of like for like what it is for me, which is something you read about in the history books. Or in your case, probably more, more, more poignantly, maybe some stories you hear from your dad or your mom about yeah. the 60s. So the 60s, you've got the um, you've got the uh, 1969 summer of love, you know, make love, not war. You've got the anti-war movement going on, but also in the late 60s, you've got like for example, 1966, you've got the rise of um, the or the formation of the Black Panthers. Now the um, the nation predates that. Yeah. In terms of their presence here. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. So uh, if you Malcolm could talk a little yeah, bit so about Malcolm that. Malcolm X, he came out to Oakland in 1957. Okay. And so he organized a mosque and it was in West Oakland. And this is what I've heard from, you know, yeah, of course, no, no, from, please. from, so don't quote me on the exact dates, but there was, they organized a mosque and it became mosque number 26. And it was in, uh, it was in West Oakland on Henry street. We're now in the West Oakland, uh, Bart. Bart. Okay. So when they built that bar platform, like that was the heart of the black community and it ended up separating it. So on the mm. other side of the bar platform, that was used to be like low income housing, harbor, uh, the harbor houses or something like right. that. So they separated that and now that became like, uh, like, uh, more like warehouse type stuff down that yeah. way, right? Now, like, even though, like the, the, they got a big uh, post office down there now, like the, where the post office, where the packages go before they get shipped, is right there. It's on Henry Street. But so back in those days, uh, the black community in San Francisco was might have been it was thriving. It might have been more blacks in San Francisco than in West uh, Oakland. Okay, so. They actually Temple Number Twenty Six moved to the Fillmore District mm. in San Francisco, and so all of the Muslims in Richmond and Oakland they would have to go to San Francisco for the mosque. It wasn't like, you know, and it, so you had to sell enough papers to get your own mosque with its own number. It wasn't like you could just open up a mosque like now, yeah. you know, as long as you could afford <laughs> right. the carpet, right? And the nation was also, <clears throat> excuse me, very centralized. Yeah. Like you had to get permission. You had to get permission. And, and, and so one of the when ways. When you say sell enough papers, you mean Muhammad Speaks. Muhammad like, Speaks yeah. papers. So right. so yeah. there was a. And bean pies. And, and bean pies. And bean pies right, but right, it right. was mostly the paper okay. sales. So there, so there was a guy came out here, him and his brother, Yusef Bay, and uh, his brother's name now is like Rob, like R A. A B Yusuf Art. Bay as in the bakery. Black Muslim bakery. Yo, black Muslim. We gotta Muslim talk bakery. about that. We gotta talk about that. So but when yeah. he first came, he started he got his brother and him, they they was very active in the mosque in San Francisco, Temple Temple number twenty six. And he kept on saying, Man, we gotta get a spot in Oakland. So, like you were saying, they had the summer of love, they had a lot of progressive yeah. whites. So yeah. what he started to do was he would tell brothers, don't just try to sell the papers to black folks. Mm. Go out to Berkeley and sell it to the white folks. Mm. This is Yusuf Bay, you're saying? Yusuf okay. Bay, and okay. they ended up getting the paper sales up. So they got mm. enough paper sales. To get a numbered temple. But so what they did, because they already had San Francisco was 26, they gave Oakland 26B. So they didn't get, by that time, their numbers should have probably been like 58 or something. So, 
So it was like a satellite temple. Is that wow, fascinating. <laughs> so they they couldn't be twenty seven because no, they didn't hit a certain threshold. Yeah, no, 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 no. Dollar so by oh. that, so yeah. they went in order. So it's yeah. like whenever a place, so twenty seven Moss twenty seven might have been in Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. Like Moss right. number fifty four is in L A. So even San Francisco had it before L A. had yeah, a yeah. temple, right? right? So why why do that? Why make it a satellite? Well, I mean, I think that they felt like. We already really got a mosque here, okay. and all of the people was really going to that mosque. Right. So now you can open up 26B so you don't have to travel across the bay. Sure. You can have your own, but you're not really your own mosque. You okay. know what I'm saying? So that right. was a way to kind of appease the leadership in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Like, they're still under us. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. While at the same time, make the people in Oakland feel right. like they had something. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, so he... So him and his brother, his brother became the minister, and he became, you said they became the captain, or like the leader of the FOI, and then, you fruit know. Of, fruit of the Fruit, fruit, of, fruit Islam. of Islam. So then he fell out with his brother. Okay. And so he started this bakery. Okay. So he started telling all of the brothers. And in the bakery the, was called? Yo, yo Black Muslim Bakery. Okay. And so he started telling all of the brothers come and I'm I'm about to we're about to move to the Midwest because there's a brother out there who understand us and so mm -hmm. brother started leaving the temple and started hanging at his bakery he started selling papers yeah and so back in those days that was a no no right you can't just sell papers and be a rival to the temple okay so he started saying no this is Elijah Muhammad's bakery I opened this bakery for him mm -hmm. if you got a problem talk to him you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying so they had this big meeting in chicago and when they was all there and elijah muhammad was there right. he stands up he says oh po oh holy apostle i opened this bakery and i need you to give it a name and elijah muhammad was like brother that's your black muslim bakery <laughs> <laughs> i love it and wow. then he named it your black muslim bakery <laughs> <laughs> fascinating and so, <clears throat> you know, so, but Oakland, that was Oakland. So then after the death of... Do you remember that bakery? Because it, it oh, lasted... Oh, yeah. Okay. It, it, it lasted up until, like, maybe the early 2000s. Correct. Like, Yusef Bay was a player in Oakland, like, on the on the scene for blacks and Muslims. That's like, right. that was, like, he did that bakery because, number <clears throat> one, it was vegetarian. <clears throat> and that was, like... It was a pioneer on the whole vegetarian. They had a barbecue tofu sandwich. And uh, I don't even know. Mm. Like, it had to be like the 80s, 70s, 80s. I, all I remember is growing up, you right. get a barbecue tofu, a right. fish sandwich, and some kind of other, like, veggie patty. But uh -huh. you couldn't get, like a, like, a burger up in there. You know what I'm saying? So, and, you know, people used to, uh, people used to, they used to like they those the prune cupcake. I mean, they had their whole and they was in all of the health food stores. And he was he was making a lot of money. You mm -hmm. said Bay, and so now he gets in trouble later. And then is it the late? I 90s mean, yeah, but he, that he had been doing that type of stuff yeah, the whole time. Right. So, so you and, know. and by trouble, I mean he, he he's implicated in the uh, killing of a journalist. Yeah, no, that wasn't oh. him. That oh, was his sorry. son. Okay, you said okay. Bay the fourth. <laughs> So okay. what happened with Yusef Bay was he had, uh, and this was in the early 2000s, I guess some molestation charges oh, yeah, came right. out yeah, of yeah, against of some, some of his foster uh -huh. daughters and right. stuff like that. Right. And so that kind of like, when that cloud was over his head, he passed away. Yeah. But yeah. so if you fast forward to me growing up, right. I definitely, when I came back out here in 89 from staying with my dad, mm -hmm. I remember watching... Like I every I would watch, Fah Imam Fahim had a show, mm -hmm. and you said Bay had a show, and they would come one would come on, then the other would come on. A show like on public access. Oh, uh, it was or public yeah. access, okay. and they had a station, a black-owned TV station called Soul Beat, and so the, you catch it on public right. access on Thursdays, and then Soul Beat on like Saturday night or yeah. something. So now we've mentioned his name a couple of times, and and believe me, like. So Imam Fahim Shweb, um, who we've wanted to have on the show and we need to have on the show, but we are talking like senior level leadership within the Imam W.D. Muhammad yeah. community. I mean, yeah. he goes way back. Yeah. Uh, him and uh, Imam Abu Qadir. Yeah. yeah. So Imam Abu, so Imam 
W.D. Muhammad actually moved to Oakland. That's right. You and he lived here. talks about that. Uh-huh. Yeah, and he actually purchased Massive War Theme in East Oakland. And so that became like the hub for African-American Muslims. And Imam Fahim is appointed Imam. And so at first, Imam Fahim was the muezzin, and the Imam was a Fijian brother named Muhammad Abdullah. And so my, it was always rumored that Muhammad Abdullah was Master Far Muhammad, right? So this is like, and I tell people, one of the only times I ever went there for Juma, so I can say this is my own Riraya, is it came up. He was giving a goodbye, and he was this old Fijian brother talking real slow, and he said, you know, one time I was at my house, and I'm looking out the window, and I'm wondering how I'm going to feed my family. I didn't have a job, and... Yusef Bey pulls up in a car with some other brothers and they knock on my door and I open the door and he gives me a bag full of money and he says, Master Farrar Muhammad, we want to thank you for what you did to my people, for our people. And then he turns and he leaves. And I was like, I don't know who Farrar Muhammad is, (laughs) (laughs) but I'll happily take the money. You know what I'm saying? And so it's always up in the air. Was he Farrar Muhammad? Was he not? Mm-hmm. Definitely Imam W.D. Muhammad, they say that he says he was Father Muhammad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, you know, Allah knows best. But both of those, Imam W.D. Muhammad, mm-hmm. Far Muhammad, mm-hmm. Imam Abu Qadir, they was all there at the Masjid when I was young. And then Imam Abu Qadir became, a, was appointed in San Francisco. And then that's when Imam Fahim became the, the resident Imam. And that had to be a very long time ago. Mm-hmm. Like, you're talking about 35 years or something at least. You know what I'm saying? So when I came back in 89, and now I'm like, okay, I'm trying to be on my dean. Mm-hmm. So I'm starting to hang out with, you know, my old crew. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm Muslim now. And know what I'm saying? I'm really, they was like, you always was Muslim. I'm like, yeah, now, nah, but I'm on it now. And like for them, they would see like rosters and think they was Muslim. Like they were just kids from Oakland. Anybody who wasn't named like yeah. Lamar, he must be Muslim. <laughs> right. And so, you know, and I was like, so I remember one of my friends was like, man, man, my homeboy Jamal's dad is Muslim, man. I was like, he is? He's like, yeah, man, he's an emir. I was like, what's an emir? Mm. He run the mosque. I was like, you mean an imam? Nah, he, I'm telling you, he's an emir. His name is Amir Abdul Malik. Wow. And he run the mosque. The emir of the place. He's Malik. telling okay. everybody what to do up in there, right? So we driving through East Oakland one night. And we pass the mosque, and he like, there goes a mosque right there. So I'm like, pull over. So we pull over, and so we go in there, and I'm like, I don't know, 11, going from the 11th to the 12th grade. And so when we get in there, you know, I meet Amir Abdul Malik for the first time. There's a brother named Hashem, who uh, you know from the Islamic Cultural Center. Oh, man. He was there, and there was a brother named Wali who wrote a book later on called medicine or something it was like on a bestseller book but he's in from them he lives in denver now but it's all these young african-american brothers and they was like going to cow and like that was like even though my family i had an educated family like my mom taught at laney and you know my dad was a lawyer you know what i'm saying like but i never really seen like young black college students mm-hmm. like that just wasn't like in oakland yeah it was big if you went to junior college. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. most of the cats who I knew, that wasn't their thing. Like, mm-hmm. it was a few who went to college on athletic scholars. But these was like, and it was like a, and they wasn't that much older than me. And so that really had a profound effect on me. Like, when I could have just went back to my old stuff, right. I end up meeting these brothers. I, you know, Allah got a plan for everybody. So That's right. I come into the mosque, and, you know, they was, I was like, these dudes, is young dudes, you know what I'm saying? Because right. when I was even when I was hanging with my dad, the people who was religious, older. they was older folks, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? 
And then I seen it, you know, it was just a whole difference. And I remember, so my mom, she had a friend and her friend's daughter and me was the same age. And they had the plan for us to hook up and get married or whatever. So they would all, and then, you know, I won't say the sister's name. She ended up, she ended up becoming like a famous person from Oakland, but you know, she was a beautiful sister and everything. And I remember they had, right after I went to the Mars, they had, uh, took us out to breakfast. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, she was like, you going to get serious or, you know what I'm saying? But I, you know, I was just, even though I used to like run this, I was so shy around women. It was really like Allah's way of protecting me. Like I never had yeah. girlfriends. I was like, any time a girl liked me, I didn't even know what to say. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, I just was like so awkward that it never would work out. Yeah. But now I'm getting older. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you know, women going to see a guy and be like, you know, we could do something and I remember after I went to the mosque that Friday she called me at the house and she was like and they live like up the hill from us and she was like you know ain't nobody here you gonna come over and I said okay I'm gonna come over and I remember I went to the house and the 15 used to go straight from my house to that masjid right but I would have had to make a right. Bus line. Yeah, so I would have to make a right to go to the bus and a left to go to her house. I remember I came out the house and I made the right. And I went and got on the bus. And I catched the bus out to East Oakland. And, you know, it's like, this is when East Oakland was like East Oakland. Like, this is like one of the roughest scenes. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I go up in there for, the, for, for Juma and there's a brother named Leb because Amir Abdul Malik wasn't there. And Leb was giving a khutbah, and he was talking about fornication. And I remember him giving that khutbah. I was like, God wanted me to come here, right? So <laughs> instead of going to the sister's house. And I never, ever called her or told her why I didn't mm -hmm. come. I just was like, I'm just going to stick on the dean, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, you know, alhamdulillah, ended up going back to uh stay with my dad in 1990 and that's when i graduated high school okay and then uh that's when i went to that trip to umrah got it so alhamdulillah yeah. uh well with that in mind why don't we take a short break and we can uh discuss our new sponsor for defeats congress that's right we're really excited to have a new sponsor so uh short message from our sponsor and then we'll be right back Zucky, have you gotten all your tax receipts from 2018 yet? It's time to do our taxes. I haven't. I'm still waiting on a few, and I haven't had the chance to chase them up. And I think part of the problem is that I can't really remember all the organizations or massage that I donated to, so it's hard to keep track. You know, that is so true, and I know just the solution. Did you know that if you partner with the American Muslim Fund, they can distribute your charitable giving to all the organizations you want to support, and at the end of the year, they'll give you one consolidated receipt. Hmm. So there's no need to chase up receipts from various organizations you've given through throughout the year and you can't even remember donating to. So the American Muslim Fund will manage and keep track of your donations for you in, order, in your own donor-advised fund. So that seems hassle-free and, uh, I don't know, not a, not a bad way to, to simplify your donations. Exactly. So to find out more about the American Muslim Fund and how donor advice funds work, visit www.amuslimfund.org slash DAFS or donor advice funds. Nice. All right. Welcome back. Um, so we were uh, talking with uh, uh, Brother Sundiata. We've been kind of... Uh, all over the place as these conversations tend to go. Um, but I want to, so I want to put a pin in that conversation in terms of you coming back in the 90 post, post high school. But if we could go back a little bit, just to, just a bit um, uh, of the formation and the development of the black Panthers, because as I said, we'd be remiss not to talk about the black Panthers and their relationship to Oakland. Um, if you could maybe t what, share, not, you know, maybe from the vantage point of your own experiences and then what you know about the history. So, so actually, 1989, when I came back to California, that was the, uh, what ended up being the year of the earthquake. Of 
course. I came back that summer. That was in the summer, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Fight the Power with Public Enemy song was out. That's, right. That's all I could always remember because he said 1989's the number, right? That's right. And you know, uh, I think Yusef Hawkins had been killed, but Huey P. Newton, who was one of the founders of Black, he died that summer. He mm -hmm. was actually murdered in West Oakland. And so what I do remember is like, you know, they started at a junior college that like our masthead is on what's now Martin Luther King Jr. Way, the lighthouse and 42nd. Mm -hmm. That when I was young, that street was called Grove Street and it connected the blacks in West Oakland to the blacks in South Berkeley. That street ran through both it does. neighborhoods. Yeah, right. Yeah, and yeah. so, you know, um, I remember them coming around and trying to get people to change the name. But if you driving through North Oakland, there's like a pink, huge pink building. And it's like says something on there like Research Institute or something now. But that used to be Merritt College. And so it used to be like smack dab in the middle of the black community okay. of Oakland. Yeah. And so that's the Merritt College where the Black Panthers started. They started at Merritt College. They started College. at Merritt College. Now, mm -hmm. the Merritt College, they since moved the campus up yep. into the Oakland Hills. So, it's like, it's off of, like, Redwood Road or something. But back in those days, it was right. It was it was the school for before Laney. Smack dab in the middle of Oakland. It was the school yeah. where, like, if you wanted to get a higher education, mm -hmm. that's where you would go. Okay. And so, you had people coming back from Vietnam, like Bobby Seale. And you had Huey P. Newton, who just grew up in West Oakland. And, you know... I mean, it was a different time. Like, even when I was coming up, people was, you would go over people's house and they would have Miles Red Book and stuff like that. Like, people was just, they was activists, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. so, the Black Panther Party started there at mm -hmm. Merritt College, which is actually in North Oakland. And I think they have a place called uh, It's All Good Bakery, and I think that was their first headquarters, you know what I'm saying? And so, actually, the Lighthouse Mosque used to be a community center that was owned by the Methodist the Church. Present the present Lighthouse. The present Lighthouse yeah. Mosque. And that was actually, they had like a school there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, like, I always tell people, like, the Lighthouse Mosque was started by the Methodist or the Lutheran, like a Christian community. And then it became like, uh, I feel like a lot of the Lighthouse Mosque itself with the black, it follows like the conversion story of blacks coming to Islam. <laughs> That's beautiful. Because then it, after the Methodist is when it becomes kind of a hub for, for activity. For activity. Of and the Black like, Panthers. Of the Black Panthers and uh, Sonia. Different writers. I don't okay. want to mess up yeah. nobody's name sure. speaking off the head. But different, they would come there and have meetings there. And they ran a school out of there. And then, right. then it went back to just, I think, different. Uh, church groups bought it and then you know we was able to purchase it in 2014 correct so you know so, you know where we was at right, before the little you know no, no, i mean we, we definitely have to talk about the uh, lighthouse mosque but um before we kind of conclude the the, the conversation around the black panthers um how much of an influence did they have in in, in terms of oakland i mean socially? so when i was and what kid, was if you will like what is to your in, in your mind, the connection that the Black Panthers have with Islam? So, when I was a kid, all of the businesses in Oakland was Black-owned. Like, every corner store, uh -huh. every funeral parlor, and that all was because the Black Panthers used to preach that Black people need to only spend their money with Black folk. Like, we, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. that became a thing. And so, when I was young, like, like the way people talk about Atlanta... That's how Oakland was, you know what I'm saying? Like, look at all these young black entrepreneurs, they owning this, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then... It's interesting you mentioned Atlanta because we're talking about the Black Panthers and then, of course, H. Rap Brown, i.e. Imam Jamil al -Amin. Yeah, so right. he came to... I saw my mom took me to see him speak in 1982 at the Henry J. Kaiser Convention Center. At he that, sold it out. He was Imam Jamil. At that time, in He 82? was just coming home from prison. And they sold it like H. Rap Brown is coming to the community. So all of these former activists and he came and he was so Muslim. <laughs> like yeah. sometimes you'd be like, man, that brother too Muslim. Like I think like he was on one level yeah, and the yeah, people yeah. who 
came to see him, it did they didn't get the connection. Because for them, Muslim man, you thought white folks was the devil, and he man. was he was a Sunni Muslim. That's and true. I think you know, it was a lot of times. And I think people we, we, at that time, even probably when they heard Muslim, they thought, especially within the black community, I would imagine, you know, bow ties and yeah, and that's what he was like. He was and yeah, he, he, he shows up probably he's in, dressed in yeah. all of the. He looked more like he was coming out of the Middle East Middle or something. East, you know right, what I'm saying? So, right. so but yeah, yeah so sorry. that was Oakland. So, but mm-hmm. then in the in the mid '80s, that's when the drugs started to come in. So it was like. You know, they always had drugs in every inner city, but I feel like in the 80s, the youth, like before that, I feel like people who were drug dealers and drug users was adults. Mm. But in the 80s, they recruited young guys to sell drugs, to do the murders, because they would only be facing a little bit of time if they got caught. Like, you know, you... 14 years old you could get away with a lot and not get charged as an adult and go to the youth authority and come home and you know what i'm saying get right back in it so those days the youth have been targeted i don't know if, if it was like a grand scheme or if it was just people trying to make money and just like this is a good business because you could give a youngster a little bit of money to do some stuff and he'll be like oh yeah i can take my friends and play video games so yeah. So in the 80s, definitely a lot of those businesses and all, that's when a lot of like uh, Arab families started to buy all of the corner stores and it just, it, Oakland became different. So the one of the most empowered communities because of the legacy of the Black Panthers became one of the most, I feel like, marginalized communities. So black people in Oakland ended up even though you still had a lot of home ownership in those days, but once people on drugs, like the mama died, the kids are selling those houses. So now, now home ownership is probably mm-hmm. at an all time low. Like when I was a kid, everybody I knew, oh no, their grandmama owned the house, their grandfather owned the house, their mama owned the house that they lived in. Yeah, that was like ninety percent of the community. Now it's like the opposite. That's you know right. What I'm saying? That's right. And and again, I mean, we'd be remiss not to mention the fact that, I mean, Oakland, the Bay, specific, you know, is this hub of all this activity. Um, it certainly attracts the attention of the FBI, yeah. COINTELPRO. Yeah. I mean, that's that, that's a whole chapter of. It's funny because so when I when I got involved in Masjid Al Islam, which was so Masjid War Theme was the old okay. Masjid in Oakland, mm-hmm. and then there was a guy who used to be a big time drug dealer. He came home from prison. He, when he was in prison, he had been influenced by like Malduti and and different thinkers. So when he came home, he opened up a mosque in East Oakland. Not too far from the old mosque. The original name was Masjid Malduti. And then he moved it from from East 14th to 82nd and MacArthur, and he changed the name to Masjid Al-Islam. You know and what I'm that, saying? And that was? That was uh, Imam Musa, Imam Abdul Alim Musa. So okay. he, you know, he definitely had his outlook that was more akin to some of the East Coast. When I got to the East Coast, they was like, man, Imam W.D. Muhammad? You know, he doesn't follow the sooner. He's, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And right. so he kind of had more of that approach. Because on the East Coast, you've got the Dar- you had, And so he was more like a member of the Dar. And he's yeah. actually, I found out years later, that he was the one who brought Imam Jamil to Oakland because uh-huh. he was part of his Jamal. Right. You know and we've talked about the Dar al-Islam movement with uh, Dr. Hassan Bagby. And yeah, Mo- I, I, yeah, 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 I listened to that. I listened that's right. to that. So, so people are, can go back and check that out um, uh, because that has, I mean, that's, again, a very unique history. Um, so Masjid al-Islam later then, isn't that where uh, Im- uh, Amir, Amir Abdul Malik? So Amir Abdul Malik was one of Imam Musa's Amirs. Okay. So, And that's the... What is the Sabakun movement? Yeah, talk a little bit about that. So, so when, now, when you say like it was originally called Imam, I mean, I'm sorry, Masjid Maududi. So we're talking about an influence, um, like they're obviously influenced by you know the, uh, the like the uh, political Jamaat reform Islam, movement, Jamaat Islami, and then of course the Ikhwan. Yeah. With so, Sayyid Qutb. so 
I mean, that was for us when I was I was coming home from the Marine Corps, and that was like, I got milestones like read this. We going over we this book, you know what I'm saying? That's so right. like, and I'm reading it, and it's you know, it's like for where I was at, I feel like unless I was going to become a political science major. I didn't really probably going to benefit that much. Like some of the stuff in there is good information, but a lot of it is like more of a political nature. Whereas like, you know, I I grew up in East Oakland, man, and West Oakland and South (laughs) Burr. Like I need something for my soul. You know what Mm. I'm saying? And, and not to like to talk so. No, but, but so that influence comes in through Imam Musa. Yeah. But it's always a, it was a nationwide trend of course so, but i'm saying in oakland, in oakland in it came of, from Imam yeah. musa okay. so it's like if you went anywhere in the country mm-hmm. outside of probably california you had two masajid in That's the right. black community right you had the sunni masajid where we was they was like we sunni muslim mm-hmm. and you had the imam wd muhammad masajid which they was looked at as being more like the american muslims right you know what i'm saying, saying yeah. and the masters they didn't have that much like in Oakland, for instance, we didn't do United Eads. Every once in a while we would, but pretty much they would be. Yeah. Like, and it was basically really the leadership that didn't see eye to eye because the average Muslim, if he was at War Dean or if he was at Masjid al-Islam, they would kick it if Got they it. ran into each other. But, you know, and then Masjid War Dean, the brothers was about maybe 10 or 15 years older. Older, than us. that's right. That's like right. all uh, the, when I got to Oakland, and like settled there and got married, it was like everybody matched out Islam was like my age, and I was like twenty something. Like mm. it was like there was no, it was like the youth leading the youth. It was like Man. this brother, like I got put in positions to give khutbah and stuff, not because I knew a lot about Islam, but because. I grew up hearing Kutbah. So yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. well, he could do this. Know what I'm saying? Right. So, 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 like, so the Sabi Kun kind of comes from that uh, milieu. And so they're influenced by all those, pro, you know, the all political, those, like, political Islamic thinkers. Right. So they, and they, they said that what they was doing was Islamic movement. Yeah. Like, you know, like, you know. So the language, I mean, almost the language is different than what is used at, you know, Masjid WD. Like, yeah. Right? It was. So. It was night and day. Night and day, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you went to a khutbah of Amir Abdul Malik, it was going to be talking about Palestine. It was going to be talking about the Zionists. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For for better or for worse. Right. When you went to uh, to Massive War Dean, Fahim Shue was going to be talking about how to build an economic infrastructure. How mm-hmm. to, you know what I'm saying? For right. better or for worse. Right, right. But that, that was, that was, the leanings was different. Got it. You know what I'm saying? And really... And that remains the case to this day, you think? Well, I mean, so Masjid al-Islam, they're both really just kind of like shadows of their old self. So Abdul Malik, he left, and he was really the engine that made Masjid al-Islam go. It was like, he was so charismatic. He was, right. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, you know, you would be a young African-American. He wasn't that much older than us, but he, you know, he was... He was had two wives, like everything yeah, yeah, that was yeah. romantic <laughs> about Muslims. <laughs> so no, no, you're absolutely right. <laughs> he was like, I remember first because I, I we'd was... <laughs> hear about him in in Houston about this fiery Imam in in in, in West Oakland, yeah, uh, East, Oakland, East Oakland, East Oakland, and yeah, I mean post nine eleven, you know, yeah. and talking about oh, so yeah, see, yeah, even was... by nine and eleven, he's he's he had changed a lot. He had mellowed out oh, a lot. Like that's mellow. Okay. 9/11, <laughs> okay. Before 9-11, man, right. come on, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. It was like, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then so, you know, at that time, you just had a lot of young. Right. and But, I mean, it was like because California still shielded. Like, we never knew anything about the Salafi movement or even about, you know, different Sufi movements in uh-huh. the black community. That never really reached us. That wasn't here. Masjid al-Islam and Masjid war Dean. That was right. Oakland. That was it. You know right. what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So then when, you know, a few years, like, this might have been, this was in the 90s still, uh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Sharif moved out here. Okay, we've got and to talk about that, yeah. Yeah, so Sheikh Muhammad Sharif. San Cory Institute. The San Cory Institute. So he was like, you know, he could speak Arabic. Mm-hmm. He studied in Sudan. He dressed like he was coming straight out of, like, the desert somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. he was translating books. And, you know, but 
so he moves into Oakland. He moves into Oakland. And um, kind of introduces that tradition, for lack There's of better terms, tra- traditional, what they call tradi- Sufi, yeah. leaning Yeah, so, and he Islam. had a big following. So, and if you look at it, it was it, it almost became like three different yeah. coinciding movements that all, like, they were like nationwide, definitely, for, for but sure. they had a big foothold in Oakland. Like you had the. So what's happening on the sort of national level is kind of playing out playing in the streets out of Oakland, right here in the streets of Oakland. Fascinating. And it's like so you had you had the Massive War theme, which was like one of the yeah. biggest, most strongest uh, communities of Imam W D Muhammad in the That's country right. at the time. They had a school. Oh, for sure. They had you know they had Bilal bin Rabah High School right there in Oakland. Yeah. Oakland. Because in in Houston we had Imam Qasim Ali, right? Same, so Imam Qasim, I'm sorry, sorry, Imam Qasim Ahmed. Ahmed. Imam Qasim Ahmed would invite Imam Fahim, and so we knew of Imam Fahim and his role within yeah. the Imam W D Muhammad community by ver- by virtue of uh, Imam Qasim. So you've got so you definitely have that foothold. Yeah. And then you had Matt Sabakun movement, which is starting to get satellites in Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., oh. Philadelphia. And then that was more like take Bay out of Imam Musa. And it it has its own, like, like if you look at, like, Islam in West Africa, right? And you look at some of the Imam, like they did the, the thing with yeah. Imam Ahmed Dubaba, right? Yeah, right? Like those Imams, they form cities and communities, right? Yeah, right. If you look at Christianity amongst African Americans, Christianity was definitely like if you were it's a book by uh W. E. B. Du Bois named called The Souls of Black Folks, mm-hmm. in which he talks about Must read. the African American church. Mm-hmm. How that church he didn't link it up to Africa, which I kinda do, like that the the the, the pastor he was like a governmental leader because there was no other, the government didn't let, like, black people didn't have any other institutions. So they put all of their, everything into the the black church. church. That's so true. But if you look at, like, what Senegal and some of the the Tijania and the the Moridia, those, they did the same kind of thing. The Sufi orders did very much the same thing. Yeah, so... It was hierarchical leadership. And and I feel like it, it came to America... With the slaves. So then when Muslims become, when African Americans start becoming Muslim, mm-hmm. it's the same thing. Yeah. Like our mosque isn't like MCC or MCA. Right. It's right. like our mosque is everything to us. Which it's are like, predominantly immigrant. I mean, yeah. for those who don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah so right. so our mosque for the African American is everything for us. So That's it's right. like we adopt a political outlook that we get from the member. We adopt right. an economic mm-hmm. outlook that we get from the member. So... So what happens when you have two or three different mas? And and true leadership is invested in the imam. The and imam is the, not. There's no board right. or director. That's right. It's not. He not getting fired or <laughs> he gave the bad cut by. He got to go. It's like no. I'm right. saying like that's right. He's like we look at him as like. He's like a, a a king, or not a king. No, no, but I know what you mean, like a political head. It's and, really like and, a head of state. And so, so, and then you've got like his naibs and and people who are got, under and him, got like, and he youth has, imams. He got his security team. Detail. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like it's like. It's so, what, but in Oakland, you had three different oh, ones. That's right. So, so is you end up having like, a like a lightweight tension okay. amongst the communities. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. Because so you have one or two uh, tension between Imam W D Muhammad's community and Imam Musa's community already. Already, and then and you then introduce you a third. Introduce a third one, and so it just kind of like everything started to kind of like boil over a little bit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, and okay. it was an interesting time, though. When does Imam? I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, when does Sheikh Muhammad Sharif come here? He had to come here around 96, okay. 97. And so, you know, for me, so I ended up moving with my my wife to D.C. in uh, 96. Okay. And so that's when I see a whole nother side because now in the East Coast is, you know, the Salafi movement is mm. like the predominant thing. And you know what I'm saying? Right. You, you still had Imam W.D. Muhammad community. But I felt like... Okay, I could just go amongst all the communities. So I was, 
I was more like free spirited because I felt like I was Islamic movement because I had started listening to the teachings of Abdul Malik and stuff. Okay. And one of the main things they would say was, you know, we don't want to divide and we, we want to unify with the, even with the Shia. And mm -hmm. so, so I was bouncing around and just meeting different people and hearing different things. And but so when I came back, what? one thing that wasn't existent, like when I was younger and I went to stay with my dad, Sufism was all over the East Coast. Mm. But when I got it back in the Salafi movement, if there was some Sufis, they was hiding out somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So like, so you would run into some brothers. They was Tijani or whatever. But the main thing was brothers was like high water pants. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they was like, you know, they was a little bit mm -hmm. rough, the yeah. combative. You know, yeah. I mean, that's right. They was just young, so you know, right. it's like, brother, where's Allah? You know what right. I'm saying? That's right. You know those type of questions. Talk about Aqidah. Yeah, it's all about Aqidah. Mm -hmm. Do you know about this? Do you know about that? And so. You know, so when I came, I remember me and my wife was like, man, we got to get back to California. <laughs> <laughs> so when do you come back to California? We came back in 98. Okay. So between 96 and 98, you also, uh, so uh, by that time, uh, Sheikh Mohammed Sharif and his community, w were they called the Sankori Institute? Yeah. Because so yeah, we had so, a chapter in Houston. Yeah. So they, they when he first came out, he, he was talking about the Sankori Institute and he teamed up for a little while with a brother named uh, Musa Balde okay. in uh, Alameda. Right. And they started this whole... Influenced by the teachings of Sheikh Uthman Danfodio yeah, and, and bringing and they in talked West about, African Sufism. Yeah, they talked about Timbuktu Tim, and the right. books That's and right. all of that That's stuff. Right. And so... And meanwhile, I mean, just a little <laughs> further east, you've got, of course, the early blossomings of Zaytuna Institute. Which so, you know, at, at one point, yeah. uh, Imam... Uh, Sheikh Hamza Youssef and uh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Sharif, they was they was like Imam Zaid and uh, Sheikh Hamza at one point. Oh, it's like they was I thick know. as thieves. It was like, and they was going all around the country and oh, yeah. so mash it out Islam. Kinda. That's where Muhammad Sharif comes on the radar for us because we see him traveling and very much affiliated with Sheikh Hamza. Yeah. Who by that time, right again, we're talking late nineties. Had 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 begun developing a name for himself on the national level. So he started out like right of course, here, in of California. course, right, right, right. And so he, uh, you know, like I remember the first time I heard about him, I was mad at Alzheimer's, and they was like, "Man, they," I was, they was like, "They got this fiery white he man, mm -hmm. man, you got to check him out." And you know, he would he would be on different panels with uh, Abdul Malik. You know what I'm saying, he, Amir Abdul Malik. At one point, they was cool. You oh, know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, okay. And then uh, I think Muhammad Sharif came, and they had a little bit. They didn't have the political focus no. that that Abdul Malik had, and that caused like a split between those two. Like it became a thing. Like if you're a mass Islam, don't go to no events with them guys because wow. you know they are just talk. They trying to put you to sleep. That mm -hmm. type of thing. Wow. And so. How about between Majid, um, you know, um, W.D. Muhammad and the Sankori so, folks? So, so actually, like? uh, Sheikh Abdul Rauf is the one who brought, uh, he's a brother from, from Masjid uh, Warthin, mm -hmm. Sheikh Abdul Rauf Nasir. He's the one who brought Muhammad Abdul, because Sheikh Abdul Rauf in the 80s, he studied in Sudan, mm. but Sheikh Muhammad Sharif was there at the same time. Oh, wow. Okay. And so that's how, so he brought him to California. He yeah. told him to come to California. He was actually from Texas originally, mm. or I don't know if he was from there, but he was living in Texas. Mm -hmm. And then he came up here, and then when he came up here, you know, like a lot of places that you go, Islam is already, like you could be like an Islamic scholar, and the Bay is more like that now. Yeah. Like now, if you come to the Bay, you could have studied. You could have studied with Kither, but if you don't, <laughs> if you don't get the stamp of approval from the right yeah. folks, yeah. ain't nobody. You're not gonna be giving a lot of talks. You're not gonna. Know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's kind of like you know. But back then, if somebody was like an Islamic personality or an Islamic scholar, it didn't matter yeah. what their outlook was. Mm -hmm. People would listen to him in the Bay. Got like, he, they would come out here. So, like, when right. Muhammad Sharif came out here, he was able to benefit from that probably more than he was when he was in Texas. 
people was more open to oh yeah and yeah. and it was a black city <laughs> and he's talking black african islam so mm-hmm. he got had a huge following amongst the youth you got know it. what i'm saying and and, and so the, and there's definitely um interplay between them and and zaytuna yes uh, zaytuna institute now imam Zay, imam zaid comes out here in circa 2002 2001 so what had happened uh-huh. september 11 kind of was Yes. A game changer for everybody. And and that also leads to kind of the schism that we see between, I mean, for being real, right? Yeah. Between Muhammad Sharif and, and Sheikh Hamza. So that was a, that was, if, it, it, I mean, it was and already, feel free to talk about that. I mean, as much as you're comfortable. So, I mean, for people who are from this area, you the, the schism was already there, but it was more, they didn't speak about it as openly. And then really? I think okay. when pre nine eleven pre nine eleven between like, Sheikh Hamza and, she, and 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 Imam Muhammad Sharif, and then after nine eleven, you know, Sheikh Sheikh Muhammad Sharif wrote an open letter to Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, yeah. and that's kind of like when now everything is out, out in the open. It, it had Sheikh already Hamza's visiting the White House at the State of the Union, yeah, et cetera. And right. so he was he was you know so that kind of like yeah. And I mean it was like that. I mean, Abdul Malik had a field day because he was like, I, I told yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, and I feel like Imam Zay coming out here really kind of yeah. almost saved that movement in, of Zaytuna. Do, do you have any interaction with him in the East Coast? So, actually, it was like the house that we lived in, The piece, some of the people who lived in the same house, it was a three-story house. They lived on the second story. Uh-huh. They was from Connecticut. So they was always telling us about this Imam Zaid, Imam Zaid, Imam Zaid. In New Haven. Yeah, New yeah. Haven, Connecticut. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. I never right. had song. Or, and then I joined the military. And then when I was in the, the Marine Corps, um, the Bosnia thing jumped off. And I remember when I was home visiting my father. And at this point, he's in New York. Mm-hmm. And he told me, yeah, I went down and I saw Siraj Rahaj and Imam Zaid. And they were, they were talking about. Uh, Bosnia and I was like same Imam Zaid he was yeah. like yeah man but so then when I actually get to the east coast to DC I think he was studying in Syria oh, okay. so I, yeah. I, yeah. I yeah. and then when he came out here you know people was openly saying he was a sellout so I didn't really mm-hmm. go even investigate I just was like oh yeah that's, that's that dude that's a sellout <laughs> and then you know, just to wrap it all up. Yeah. You know, one time, I at this point I've left Mass Al Islam, okay. but some still some of the teachings definitely resonated with me. Of course. And uh, and it's still to this day some of the teachings. You know, I still. I mean, most of if you would have went to Mass Al Islam and Master War Dean and even Sheikh Muhammad Sharif and asked people about Islam, they would have told you about the five pillars. It would have been 100% the same. Mm-hmm. It was like little political philosophies exactly. that separated the groups. And right. that's why, I like, you know, as for myself, when I give cut, but like, I don't touch politics because I want everybody to feel welcome at the masjid. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people be like, bro, what about this happening in the world? Those things come and go. Mm-hmm. But the, the, the things that unite us are bigger. Yeah. Than the things that divide us usually, but and Absolutely. I and I I was able to see that division. So I eat a, a, even one time I go to Fajr prayer. I'm, not, I'm in Alameda at this point, and so uh, Imam Zaid is there and it's Ramadan, and I'm like, this dude trying to infiltrate Alameda now, <laughs> <laughs> and so he uh, he comes in and they ask him to lead prayer because he's Imam Zaid and That's he doesn't lead. Right. So the you know the young half is. He leads the prayer, you know what I'm saying? And then I come back for my grip and the door is locked and uh, he's standing there. So I'm, you know, so uh, what you what you doing in Alameda? Salam alaikum, what you doing in Alameda? And he's like, oh, you know, uh, I'm Brizzy from Connecticut. I'm like, I already know all that, man. I'm saying, what you doing <laughs> at my master's in Alameda now? And he's like, he could feel the vibe. He's mm-hmm. like, oh, this is one of these guys. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So right. he's like, oh, man, I'm just coming to make a lot. Right. But it really impressed me that he, he didn't, didn't jump up to lead the right. prayer. Right. So then my uh, wife was like, 
Oh, because uh, she know ever since I left Mash Islam, I was really searching for something. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So she's like, you know, uh, she tells me, you know, uh, Imam Zaid is holding up a new place uh, the 27th of Ramadan. They're going to open up at the, at we used to call Mash Ali Man, the Sufi Mosque. They're going to open it up at the Sufi Mosque. And I said, oh, okay. So me and one of my partners, Ibrahim, we drive out to go check it out. Mm -hmm. But Master Ali Man had moved to Shattuck. Mm -hmm. And the old place that they used, that's where the lighthouse ended up. Oh, so, But we mm -hmm. went to the Shattuck. Mm -hmm. So we get there. I'm like, I don't see, ma'am. And so, you know, yeah. it was my first time really getting to kick it with Sheikh Yasser. Okay, because yeah. Sheikh Yasser Chadli is there. Yeah. So Chadli, he, And I was, I was like, I was like, man, this dude is cool as heck, <laughs> right? So we end up hanging out. And then yeah. he's like, when we're taking Iftar, he's like, yeah, uh... When we left the old place, we gave it to Imam Zaid. And there and I was like, Oh, so I'm in the wrong place. So when we was leaving, we drive by and it's just all these people was so crowded so we don't even go. Mm -hmm. And then later on, somebody was like, uh, they make Fajr there. And they was like, and they read out a book in Arabic. It was read out of Salahim, but it was all Arabic, right? So he was like, he does a class on on this Arabic book right uh -huh. so i start going just to fajr prayer and you know it's just like a few from old zaytuna seminary students was coming that's and, right because by then the beta program had launched yeah launched. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so yeah. so they had moved to berkeley and they was trying to g yeah. get it up and running mm -hmm. so um you know i just started checking them out and so along i would just i would just see them at fajr because okay. that's all the lighthouse would do. They would do Fodger and they would do a program, a birder program on so Thursday. So what year is this that they start Lighthouse? 2007. Wow. So. Because okay. I moved here in 2009, okay? And, and prior to moving out here, and Zucky knows this because I mean, one of the trips I actually stayed with Zucky. Mm -hmm. Before I moved out here, I, I, I used to come for work. And that's kind of when I fell in love with the Bay. But my first Juma after moving here. And I don't know how the Lighthouse Mosque or the name or the recognition even came, was on my radar. But I was like, I, if I'm going to pray Juma and inaugurate myself, uh, you know, in terms of my presence in the Bay or, where, you know, living in the Bay, I have to pray Juma there. And so my first Juma Friday prayers ever was the Lighthouse Mosque. Wow. Alhamdulillah. The, the old location. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So already it was. And on. you was like, this little place no, is man, like it about blew as me. big as this. It's as big as this room. <laughs> It blew me away because, again, you know, um, coming from where I was, I think, you know, and, and my background, like this was, a, you know, fine, a small, dinky little place, but no partition between the brothers and the sisters. The sisters, stand, you know, sitting right behind the brothers. They get access to the imam. Um, and it just felt like a real community, man. And there was you something special. So about it, it was like me just going there at Fajr. And, you know, I had all these negative of course. ideas about Imam Zaid and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so Believe just, me, we were, I was drinking the same Kool-Aid you were, but, but you know, different teachers, but yeah. they were drinking, we were drinking the same Kool-Aid. And so, so I just, just seeing how yeah. he operated, like, if, if ever I would be like, because, you know, I still know a lot of people in Oakland who's struggling with just all of our old Masajid had kind of like, right. they was, ceased functioning, there was no classes there was just juma and then that was it it was we had two elementary schools both closed down at the same time you know mm, what i'm saying so right. it was like now people was just like like people had invested their whole spiritual lives and now they was just lost you know what i'm right, saying so right. and then uh i'm sitting seeing imam zaid and just like People would come to my wife and be like, they about to get evicted. I would tell Imam Zaid, and Imam Zaid would get money for to pay their rent. Right, like, right. I don't know if he was coming out of his own pocket. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it was like, I was like, I ain't never met an Imam like this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, not to say that other Imams wasn't like that, but, you know, just the linear interaction I had with Mash Al-Islam, you kind of had to know the Imam to get, to, to get yeah. help like that. You know what I'm saying? Why do you think, like, do you know what the idea was behind starting the Lighthouse Mosque? Because you, like you said, you had the you had the community affiliated and associated with Sheikh Yasser Chadli, which could be the quote unquote Sufi presence yeah. in Oakland. Why Lighthouse? So, uh, 
Osama Cannon had started a place called Zawia, and it was the Totleaf Foundation or Totleaf Umbrella. That's right. And so he t- Imam Zay wasn't in the country at the time, so he told Imam Zay, Imam, and Imam Zay was like, where is it at? And he was like, it's in Fremont. He said, man, you got to find something for the people in Oakland. Mm. So uh, Osama Cannon actually f- went to Sheikh Yasser and got the deed or the lease, got the information from the landlord, and he's the one who actually established the lighthouse, him and... You know, other people in that the That was a leading question, purpose. by the way. I, I knew the answer, but I wanted to kind of... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I've heard the story by way of Usama, of yeah, course. Yeah, so... And, 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 and the Zawiya, actually, so Talif, you know, I mean, I know a little bit about Talif. Uh, full disclosure, I'm, I mean, I'm on, I'm on the board, so I say that tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> but uh, in our f- official filing papers for Talif, it's actually called Zawiya. Yeah. I mean, we actually changed the name later. But anyway, sorry, like the official, when, when the nonprofit was started, yeah. So, you know, funny... This is like a funny story. So okay. I remember years ago, uh, Imam Suhaib Webb and uh, uh, Sidi Usama, they were speaking at what's now service, right? San Ramon Valley oh. Islamic Center. But at this point, it was small like the old lighthouse. It was a very small was. place, right? Yeah. And so uh, I, I'm bringing a bunch of my friends out. Come on, man. We're going to go check this out. Da, da, da. We got this. Uh, I was like, this. I gave him the whole spiel. Like, this is his brother. He used to be a gang member. Now he's the E-man. Yeah. I didn't tell him he was white. Because <laughs> <laughs> that don't really play, right? right like, right. that That plays more like yeah. in other. But, like, with black Muslims, they be like, gang was he in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but he's gang Muslim in, 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 uh, in Oklahoma. Yeah, it's yeah. Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, but they just Country hear bumping. gang. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they a gang and they think right. he like the like Hoover from LA or something, right? So, you know, we get out there. My man is like, man, they better not be talking about voodoo, and he's driving us. Or I was, I'm just leaving. I'm like, nah, so we get there super early. Okay. So we get there. I don't even know if Usama and Imam uh, Suhey remember this, right? Okay. So, but this was from my perspective. They might sure. have a different take on it. Yeah. So we get there, and so we come in that we park right at the front door. So it's like we at the front, the front door's glass. We come in. I remember the old service. Yeah, we yeah. sit in yeah, there, yeah, and it's like before anybody gets there. So people start f- filing in around us. We're sitting. You know, you come early, get your seat in the back, right? Mm-hmm. So we sitting with our backs up against the wall or whatever. So then City Usama, this is my first time I ever saw him. He comes, he gives a talk. And then he finishes his talk. And then they tell Imam Suhaib comes out. Hmm. Or he comes from the crowd and goes to the front, right? right. And my man, Cuyante, who was driving, he looks like. And he gets up and he just walks out. He didn't oh, even wow. hear him say one thing. Wow. <laughs> and so... You know, it might have been, we were in the minivan, so it was like six or seven of us. They all start getting up, and, and I'm like, I'm still going to listen to. So he starts giving his talk. He's talking about the hellfire or something. So they turn on the headlights. The headlights is coming into the masjid, onto the to the stage where they're uh-huh. speaking at, yeah. right? Oh, no. And they start beeping the horn. And so I'm like, oh, these dudes. Oh, so I get gosh. up, and when I get up, now everybody's looking at me because I'm the last one to leave, right? right. So I just go out, you know what I'm saying? I was like, man, that's, y'all was out of pocket. He was like, man, that dude was talking about voodoo. I was like, you didn't even listen to anything he said. <laughs> so we drive off. But after that, whenever I would see City Usama and even uh, Suhey, well, they, I think they thought that I was like some kind of hardcore Salafi or something, didn't want to. Because, you know, they was like, these dudes interrupted the program, but the only one they really seen was me. Right. So it was like, it was every time I would see him, I would get kind of get that, like, tense kind of salam or, you know what I'm saying? So years go by, I go to the Zawiya. Yeah. Now I'm part of the lighthouse. And so when I come in, I see What's that? <laughs> he looks. <laughs> and then so, you know, he asked me to come up and give a talk and i'm like i didn't want to give a talk but when you know Osama can be kind of like i don't you know he can be kind of forceful about stuff (laughs) so then afterwards he comes to me he says yeah man they kept saying uh it's a brother named sandiata and i couldn't place but then when i seen you i was like oh i've been knowing this brother (laughs) 
for a long time. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm doing it. But so if he's listening or if he hears the podcast, the only reason I left was because of my ride. <laughs> we've got it on We've got it on wax. We, 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 it's, 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 it's on the record as to why you left. Um, so to, to, just to kind of wrap up then. Um, so Lighthouse, um, you are now Amir. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, maybe kind of talk, get into a little bit of that. So... Um, Lighthouse Moss is uh it you know definitely they used to have a resident imam. It started out it was Imam Abdul Latif Finch and then it was I was the Emir okay. and so the Imam was appointed by I think Imam Zaid and then I was voted by the community and then, you know I kind of rigged the vote. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and just as Muslims do, You're we haven't had we, we haven't had an election since. You know? <laughs> Like, we already had a vote in, like, 1970. You don't remember? <laughs> but so after that, yeah. you know, I just been kind of there just, you know, if we changed and grown a lot. And yeah. alhamdulillah, we we do a lot of programs actually in the community and not only just with the massages. That's so right. we That's try right. to be more like that old school, you know, islamic feeling where people could say okay those is the muslims they help us out and right. that definitely a lot of that came comes from imam zaid and his his leadership style you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. he imam zaid is definitely not like a you know ivory tower scholar yeah. he's definitely mm -hmm. always been kind of like and i think he's lovingly referred to as the people's imam for and, that reason and, and, and i right. really feel like that comes from his community work he did in connecticut you yeah, know what i'm saying for sure. so New Haven, yeah. and, and i feel like a lot of times a lot of our um leaders if they don't have that kind of day-to-day -day with the people mm -hmm. and and uh uh sheikh abdul kareem yahya and i'm really in with this because this is kind of poignant he said to me one time that uh every leader is a teacher but every teacher is not a leader. Yeah. He's like, if you're just a teacher, you know, you, people will want to come to you to get the information. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a lot of teachers who are kind of like, they're a little eccentric. And they might even be a little harsh. You know, like, you know, the guy on the, not Mr. Miyagi, but the guy from Cobra Kai, right? Like he was one, he, you're not going to invite him What's over to again? the house. Chris. <laughs> Crease, you're not right. going to invite yeah. Crease over to the house and hang out with him because, you know, but if you want to learn martial arts, you go to Crease. You know what I'm saying? But he was like, but to be a leader, which is like his Imam Zaid is, I feel like you have to deal with people. You have to deal with their idiosyncrasies. Mm -hmm. So you can't get caught up on your own ego. Mm -hmm. And so, like, the best leaders, they are, you know, welcoming. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, you know, and so... I feel like, you know, for everything Oakland went through Islamically and socially to have somebody like Imam Zay just come and kind of like help out and get things kind of back to where people could have a place to like if, if somebody wants their mom to know about Islam, I feel like them coming to the lighthouse, the perfect place. He's not going to be upstairs in a dark room somewhere. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, no, absolutely. You know, and I and, you know, I, we talked to. Arab brothers all the time, they'd be like, brother, why is this, this is, and I'd be like, man, we done had at least 150 women take shahada at the lighthouse. That's right. Hmm. I was like, those, those are massaging in Oakland. Mm -hmm. They don't have as many women take shahada because women don't even feel comfortable. It's not a very women you know, friendly, a exactly. woman friendly uh, space. And I, yeah, certainly lighthouse has that. So, um, well, thank you. I mean, um, Lighthouse has a website they can find out more about it. For yeah, lighthouse, lighthousemoss.org. And mm -hmm. we have a Facebook page, Lighthouse Moss. This, backslash this, is, Facebook this has whatever. been a journey. I just, <laughs> it, you know, I think people are really going to, it's like uh, traveling through time. Yeah. Uh, such, a, such a vivid portrait. 
that you painted. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, that about. was intense. I mean, I, I really about. wanted it to be that way. And I think we've, uh, uh, like like portraits go, I mean, you know, if, if, if it is a portrait, it's sort of an impressionistic poet, uh, uh, p- portrait, excuse me, <laughs> in the sense that we kind of touched on a lot of different things, didn't go into a lot of detail in, in any one particular area. But I mean, inshallah, we'll have you back on the show inshallah. to kind of flesh a lot of that out. Um, at, you know, and oftentimes when we do get caught up in the history and the context of the person, we don't get to talk about the person himself. So I think we were kind of neglectful and not talking so much about your personal journey and so story. So I, uh, I actually, I did Kutba with um, Brother Muiz. And he was like, yeah, man, I, t- I talked to Barvez and told him, you got to be on this show. And I was like, I'm going to be on this show on Sunday. I was like... I was like, but you know, uh, he's like, yeah, man, we want to hear your story. I was like, man, I don't want to really tell my story as much as I want people to like Oakland. People fall in love with Oakland. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And like people who never been there, it's like a hidden jewel for them. You know what I'm saying? I wanted, I wanted, yeah, exactly. So I wanted you to. Uh, spotlight the town. Man. That's what I wanted you That's to do. Up. That's what's and, up. And uh, a shout out to Muiz Rafiq. Uh, Alhamdulillah. But, uh, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, uh, Sandia. And thank I mean, you guys for letting me come on too, man. It's like I always love to hear myself talk. <laughs> and with these headphones, I'm like, this is great. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yep. No. Shout out to Dre, uh, in, 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 in the uh, our our, our uh, technician engineer in the studio. So always making at, a magic at Hub Nine Two Five. That's right. In- <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So thank you so much. Uh, and again, uh, for those who want to reach out to us, uh, please uh, do send your comments, feedback, thoughts um, uh, to diffusecongruence at gmail dot com. You can also find us on Facebook, uh, like you can the Lighthouse Mosque, uh, which is <laughs> Facebook.com. Like, like them both. Okay. <laughs> and then what, what, was, what episode is this again? Oh, sorry, 76. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Alhamdulillah. Right. That's beautiful, Marshall. Yeah, that's right. So, 19, uh, so 76, episode 76. Uh, and you can uh, yeah, check, us out on, uh, check us out on Facebook. Do leave us a star, a star rating on iTunes and other places that you can find find podcast so thank you so much for listening and we will see you next time on behalf of myself and zucky uh thank you for listening and we will see you the next time on the diffuse congruence podcast